everybody, Pastor Steve, welcoming you to worship from my home. I'm glad that you are here. As you start to worship this morning, I want to take you, uh, invite you for just a moment to look around a little bit, uh, look around your home, and what do you see when you look around? That's what we're going to explore today in week number three of our message series, No Place Like Home. I'm glad that you're here to be a part of things. We also want to encourage you to take a moment to look around wherever you're worshiping today. If you're on the website, uh, look above and you'll find the links to some important things. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you'll find these links in the uh, comment section. Links to things like, uh, like the bulletin for the morning worship or the message notes for today's message. Uh, you'll find links to things like online giving. Uh, you'll find some important things that will make uh, worship a great experience for you. Everything you need to worship is just a, a click away. We also encourage you to just engage with us in worship today, to find time to sing those songs, to pray those prayers, to uh, give your offering, to uh, fill out those message notes, to really participate because we are here to worship God today. I'm glad that you're here to be a part of things, and I want to invite you just for a moment to hear this as our call to worship. People of God, open your eyes, look around. The presence of our Lord Jesus Christ is here among us and within us. God's salvation is close at hand, nearer than you know. So open your hearts and minds to the Spirit, and let's worship God together. I'm glad you're here today, church. Let's worship the Lord together. Hello, church. Won't you sing along with me, Be Thou My Vision? be all else to me save that thou art thou my best thought by day or by night waking or sleeping thy presence my light be thou my wisdom be thou my truth We are glad to have a chance to get together to share one another's concerns, and we have a couple of opportunities to do that that we want to let you know about. You can uh, uh, share with everyone today by commenting on Facebook, if that's where you're worshiping, or by joining the chat on our website, if that's where you're worshiping. If you uh, need a chance to share a little more privacy, uh, some uh, prayer concerns that you might have, you can click the Request Prayer button on the website or, uh, or uh, Facebook message me. Uh, you can also text or call 615-379-7332. Uh, you can share your prayer requests in that way. Those uh, are always available for you, and we love a chance to pray for the things that are on your heart and your mind this week, uh, to pray for the ways that God has shown up, and for the ways that you need God to show up in your life. As we join together in prayer today, we remind ourselves of all that God has done and for all that God calls us to be. Uh, let us go to that God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the opportunity to worship. We give you thanks for the technology that makes this possible in a time when we can't be together in person. We ask, God, that you would bless all of our efforts. We thank you for the opportunity to do uh, worship uh, before you. Uh, we ask, God, that in this time of separation that we might re be reminded that we are never separated from you, that we might find ways to connect with one another, 
that we might lift each other up in prayer, O God, that you might remind us that your presence is always with us, for you have promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. We thank you, God, that you are a God of grace and glory who loves us where we are in the midst of all that we're struggling with today. We pray for those who are struggling at home, for those whose health is a concern, for those whose worry and fear is, uh, is too much for them right now. We pray, God, that you might uh, be a healing presence for us, that you might be a peaceful, uh, life-giving presence for us. We pray today, O oh God, that uh, in the midst of our community, as we look around us, that we might see you in so many ways. That we might see you in the phone call from a friend or the letter that we get in the mailbox or the text that we get on our phones. We might see you in the greeting that we get from one another, that you are the one who inspire us to connect with one another, that you instruct us to love one another as you have loved us, O oh God. And so we pray that we might be your people now and always. We pray that our eyes might be open to your presence all around us and that we might be ever aware of all that you promised to do for us and through us and in us. We offer ourselves to you and all that we are today in prayer and in thanksgiving. And we remember the prayers that uh, you, the prayer that you taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, church. Won't you sing with me once again? Open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. I have been uh, completely amazed as the pastor here at this church uh, to your continued generosity for the ways in which you continue to give in support of the mission and the ministry of Cross Plains United Methodist Church. Uh, uh, each week, we continue to receive your gifts, and we're thankful for those opportunities. Uh, we want to, uh, to encourage you to continue to do that as we uh, find new ways to uh, expand the ministry that we're doing here and the mission of, of sharing that good news with everyone. Uh, we've given you a couple of opportunities.
opportunities to do that. You can uh, mail your gift in uh, through uh, the mail post office just by dropping it off there and mailing it to Cross Plains United Methodist Church, Post Office Box 10, Cross Plains, Tennessee, 37049. Uh, you can do, do online giving. We made that available for you. There are links to that on our website or in the Facebook comments below the video. Uh, we can uh, find ways to do that as well. And we've also enabled a text giving option. Uh, you can text an amount to 84321, uh, and you'll get instructions there on how to follow up with that. Uh, ways that we can make uh, continued generosity to God and the mission that God has set out before us possible. Again, we thank you for the ways in which you continue to show up, uh, and we continue, thank you. God for the ways that he continues to show up in our lives and do things that amaze us. Uh, we, uh, we are encouraged by this. Let's pray a, a prayer of thanksgiving to our God. God, we thank you for the gifts that you give, for the good and perfect gifts that you give to us, and we thank you for the opportunity to respond with gratitude to you. Uh, bless all that we offer to you, our lives, our homes, our gifts, for they are offered to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If home is really where the heart is, then home must be a place we all can share. Differences, our hearts are much the same. For where love is, we come together there. Wherever there is laughter ringing, someone smiling, someone dreaming, we can live together there. Love will be our home. Wherever there are children singing, where a tender heart is beating, we can live together there, cause love will be our
church. It's T's family. We miss Bless everybody. You. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 31. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. Well, thank you, uh, Melissa, for that song and the Tease family for sharing with us your scripture. It's great to hear from your all's home today and to, to see uh, Brady climbing around on that tree. Uh, but let's pray as we get ready to start. God, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for the opportunity to hear your word. Open our eyes to see all that you're ready to do, and open our hearts to hear from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are in week number three of our No Place Like Home series. Uh, We've been uh, uh, joining together and looking at uh, exploring the places that Jesus did ministry. And we said from the start that that Jesus really did ministry in three different types of places, that he did ministry out in the the public places, on the the hillsides and the lake shores of his day and uh, traveling around through the countryside, that that he did ministry in the synagogue, on the the church and around the church of his day and uh, did ministry in those two places. But, But Jesus also did ministry in the home. And we've talked about how each one of those places have kind of their uh, modern day equivalent of a place that we might uh, continue to see Jesus at work. Uh, But for our purposes, we've been looking at these stories of where Jesus did ministry in people's homes. Uh, There are at least 50 different stories from the four gospels of places where, where Jesus did ministry in people's homes. It's been important for us to look at the places that Jesus chose to spend time and and what Jesus did when he spent time in those places. Jesus continued to place a special emphasis on homes and later in his ministry uh, did a, a, a lot of his ministry in the homes of those that were his followers. Throughout the whole series, our, our main point has been that that place really matters. Place matters when you're telling a story. Place matters when you're understanding what is going on. And, and each of these stories uh, take place in a home that we've been looking at, and, and that really matters to understanding the story. In week number one, we looked at a story where Jesus was at home with Peter in uh, the city of Capernaum, uh, and, and there he had an encounter. Uh, we discovered that in that story that faith doesn't deny the difficulty. And we even discussed some of the difficulties that we might be having uh, during this time of social isolation and, and the difficulty we might be having with uh, worshiping through technology. But, but we continue to, to, to know that faith doesn't deny the difficulty. And then we said that the real goal for all of this was that we are to find a way to get to Jesus, that, that no matter what is going on, that there's a way in which we can discover the very presence of Jesus in our midst. Uh, then we discussed uh, last week how, how Jesus was absolutely at home with everyone. Uh, we, we talked uh, last week about, I uh, started with a little bit of a, a look about how I, I struggled through a week uh, with a lack of motivation and endured through a long week and uh, really kind of uh, found that it was comforting to know that even in the midst of being maybe sick of being at home, that Jesus was absolutely at home with everyone. Well, this week I have really worked hard to try to change my perspective as I've looked around my home and uh, done that. One of the practices that I learned from a colleague in ministry was to start my morning devotional time with the following practice. Uh, I I write out uh, five things for which I'm thankful. And then I write out one thing that's really bothering me for the day. Now, there's a reason why it's five things for which I'm thankful and only one thing that's bothering me. It's because it really helps change the way I I see my day and a realization that that I have far more to be thankful for than I often realize. Uh, And then I follow that up with uh, writing down uh, a list of two things that will uh, help make it a great day. Now, it's a reminder, and the reason I write down only two is that there's a reminder that, uh, that everything just doesn't depend on me to make it a great day. That the very presence of Jesus at home with me helps that make a, big, a, a great day. I had a, a mentor in ministry early on by the name of uh, Dr. Howard Olds. Uh, and Howard Olds, uh, when, it was, when I was doing ministry with him, uh, had a radio program that he did uh, during the weekdays on a local radio station. Uh, it was just a 30-second to one-minute 
three-minute little spot where he did a, a little devotional thought, an encouraging moment. But at the end of each one of those uh, moments, he would end with the same phrase. He would simply say, make it a great day. And it's a, a great reminder to us that this really can be a, a great day, but it all depends on how we look at it. What, you, what do you see when you look around? Uh, it, it can make a difference in your life. So the invitation we have today as we worship is to just take a moment and to look around, to look around your home and discover what you might see when you do that, when you take a moment and look around. If you look around and you see the, the dishes in the sink, do you think, well, those things just got to be washed? Or do they represent to you a, a great meal that was enjoyed around the table? What do you see when you look around? It can really make a difference. Uh, I, I found this the other day, a, a letter that was written. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's true or, or just a, a preacher story, but it's a, a great little letter that kind of gets to our point. Uh, it's written from a, a young woman home to her parents when she was away at college. It says, Dear Mom and Dad, I'm sorry I've been so long in writing you. Unfortunately, all my stationery was destroyed the night our dormitory was set on fire by the demonstrators. I'm out of the hospital now, and the doctors say my eyesight should return sooner or later. The wonderful boy, Bill, who rescued me from the fire, kindly offered to share his little apartment with me until our dorm is rebuilt. He comes from a good family, so you won't be surprised when I tell you that we're going to be married. In fact, since you always wanted a grandchild, you'll be glad to know that you'll be grandparents in several months. Signed, your loving daughter. P.S. Please disregard the above practice in English composition. There was no fire. I haven't been in the hospital. I'm not pregnant, and I don't even have a steady boyfriend. But I did get a D in French and an F in chemistry, and I just wanted to be sure that you received these grades with proper perspective. You see, what you see when you look around really makes a difference. It makes a difference in how you look. What do you see when you look around? I want to invite you to, to think for just a moment and after exercise. When you're thinking about maybe buying a new car, maybe you're looking for a new model, make, making a model, a certain color of a car. Hey, have you ever noticed that wherever you drive, you, you simply find ways to, to see that car seemingly everywhere you go? It seems like you always see what you're looking for. And so when we look at our perspective in life, it matters what we see when we look around. What do you see when you look around your house today? Our story for this week in our series, No Place Like Home, is a story of Jesus going from one home to another, and in the process of that, he, he has an encounter with two blind men. Let, let's look at that story together. It says, after Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men follow along behind him. Now, the question might be, well, what did these blind men see? Well, the easiest answer might be, well, nothing, of course, because they were blind. Blindness apparently was very common in Jesus' day. Uh, we do not know if the cases were all the same, if people were just born blind or if something happened to make them that way. But blindness was a, a, a pretty common thing, it seems, and, and a big inconvenience, as it is at any time. Uh, the self-righteous leaders in Jesus' day would have added to the problem of blindness by accusing people who were blind of being sinners who were being punished by God. Blindness was symbolic of spiritual ignorance as well, just as sight is symbolic of understanding. Listen to this verse from Isaiah uh, chapter 6, uh, these verses from 9 to 10. It says, And he said, Yes, go and say to his people, Listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. Harden the hearts of these people. Plug their ears and shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears, nor understand with their hearts, and turn to me for healing. Blindness has a lot to do with our physical ability to see, but it also has something to say about our ability to really see the things that God is doing all around us. What do you see when you look around? Oh, these blind men may not have seen nothing because they physically could not see, but they saw something else. Let's listen to what the story says. It says, After Jesus left his home, these two blind men follow along him, and they started shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. And they went right into the house where Jesus was staying. 
They were at home with Jesus. Now, it's interesting in this story is that these guys were, were probably following Jesus around. And, and outside, when Jesus was walking from home to home, he, he may not have noticed them. They may not have bothered to cry out to him. But inside, it's a different story. When, when Jesus gets into this home, these two blind individuals ask, uh, uh, cry out to Jesus, and Jesus asks them a question. Do you believe that I can make you see? Do you believe that I can do this? And they replied, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Uh, it's interesting that Jesus is continually asking people what he wants them to do, what he wants him to do for them. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, and he seemingly always waits for our response. Uh, I wonder sometimes if, if Jesus is asking us day in and day out what exactly he wants to do for us. And he's simply waiting for us to respond, yes, Lord, we, we want you to open our eyes. We, we want you to help us to see. We look around and we don't see your presence. We, don't, we look around and we don't see the things of you. But, but yes, Lord, we want you to open our eyes and show us this. We want to be able to see. Yes, Lord, we believe you can do this for us. And then it says he touched their eyes and, and, and said, because of your faith, it will happen. And in a moment, they really saw. Their eyes were opened, and they could see. They could see. Two blind men received their sight, but, but they also received a real vision of everything that Jesus was about. They, they not only saw with their eyes, but they really saw what Jesus was all about. Uh, there's a, a pastor named Michael Todd who has a, a quote that says that sight is what you see with your eyes open, but vision is what you see with your eyes closed. Sometimes it's, it's, it's easy to just to see the things that are around us, but to really have our eyes uh, uh, closed in prayer or to have our eyes open to the presence of Jesus gives us the opportunity to really see what God is about all around us. Not only did these guys see Jesus, but they had a vision for what Jesus was all about. It's interesting that Jesus is always welcoming those who are on the outside to be on the inside with him. Jesus is always welcoming those to be at home with him. Well, what you see right now is, is a screen. Maybe it's your computer, it's your phone, it's a tablet. But what you see right now are, are maybe the things you cannot do, like be here with us in church while we do worship. Uh, what you see right now, though, should in no way uh, be anything that places limits on God because we worship a limitless God, a God that does things that we cannot see clearly all the time, but a God who used, uses technology to do some incredible things right now. I, I'm just amazed at the way that God continues to, to do the things that, that we uh, may not have seen coming, but God is doing amazing things all around us. One of the challenges for me in doing worship this way and preaching to you this way is that, that I enjoy and feed off of the opportunity during preaching opportunities to, to have, make eye contact with you and to, to feed off of your body language. But now I, I can't look out at a pew and see your face. I can simply look into a camera. Uh, I may not be able to see you right now to make eye contact with you, but I am convinced that you and I can both see Jesus. We just need to have our eyes opened and look around. Today, as you look around your home, I, I want you to open your eyes to things that can help you see Jesus. I, I want you to open your eyes to the opportunities that we have all around us to really see the very presence of Christ in our midst. Uh, we're going to look at some next steps, some, some things that we can do. On our website, we have a page called Next Steps, and it, it includes some of these things, some resources that will make all this possible. Uh, the first next step that you might take when you look around is you might see your Bible sitting there on a table. Uh, if you open that Bible, uh, you can read the stories that tell us of the presence of Jesus. Uh, we have provided for you on our website reading plans uh, on that Next Step page. Uh, these reading plans involve different levels of commitment, uh, from reading one or two times a week to reading three or four passages every day. But even if you just read one verse a day, it can really open your eyes to the stories of Jesus that remind us that he is with us even when we don't see clearly. Maybe you look around and you see that comfortable chair. Uh, maybe it's where you've been watching uh, TV, binging on a Netflix series. Uh, maybe we can just use that same place to, to be comfortable in the presence of God and take that next step in 
prayer. We provided for you on that Next Step page resources for ways of praying that have been helpful to Christians throughout the generations. But even if you just stop for a few moments to pray, it can really open your eyes to the presence of God all around you. There are other next steps that you can take. Uh, maybe in the midst of all this, you're, uh, you, you need to find ways of resting. Maybe it's hard for you to sleep and you're struggling to find moments of rest, even though it seems like you should have all the time in the, for that in the world. Uh, as you lay down at night or, or lay down the, uh, for a nap in a day, I encourage you to look around, to, to look around and see the very presence of God. Hear, hear the words of Psalm 4.8 which says, in peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Even, and maybe especially for us now in our moments of rest, we can rest in the very presence of God and find ways to have our eyes opened, even in sleep, to see Jesus all around us. And maybe you just need to take that step to look around to begin with. Maybe you just need to, to open your eyes to the very things that may explore the presence of God all around you. As you look around outside a window, uh, as you walk through your home, maybe you, you even get outside your home on your porch or go for a walk. And as you look around the world around us, open your eyes and see the very beauty of God's creation. There are ways in which we can take steps into the very presence of God to, to pray that our eyes are opened and that we see Jesus in our midst. Uh, may you, we find ourselves open to the very presence of God all around us. Uh, the most important things in all of this to know is that as you might, might struggle to have eyes that are open to the presence of Jesus, the most important thing to know is that Jesus sees you. Jesus absolutely is aware of all that's going on in your life. He sees you. And in the midst of this, when maybe our eyes aren't open, when the very presence of Christ may be different for, difficult for us, know that we can stop in a moment and simply look, and He is there. For He promises us that He is there. And even in that moment, He sees us. He sees us take that next step into His presence. May you have your eyes opened and may you see Jesus all around you. Amen. Won't you sing with me the closing song today? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. more. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. One of the things that we discovered during uh, recent weeks is that we have some folks in our congregation who uh, are, are not capable, do not have the ability to have the, uh, the internet to be able to watch on Facebook or through our website. And so we've uh, tried to make some uh, new opportunities available to those people we know of. Uh, we've uh, started making uh, DVD copies of, uh, of these uh, worship experiences, these online worship experiences. Uh, if you are aware of someone else who uh, does not have the capability of watching online, uh, who would uh, need a, a DVD copy of this worship experience. Uh, I encourage you to, to just message me and let me know uh, what that, who that person is, and I will make contact and see if I can't get them uh, that DVD as well. 
Uh, again, we're glad that you've been a part of worshiping from your home as we continue in this series, No Place Like Home. Uh, next week is uh, Mother's Day, and we've put out uh, through email and on Facebook, we put out some opportunities for you to be a part of worship next weekend uh, by uh, sharing a video of you, someone in your home saying uh, Happy Mother's Day or uh, saying I, I love my mom because or I love being a mom because. And so we hope that if you would like to participate by being a part of worship next week to say happy Mother's Day to someone, that you might find ways to submit that video, and uh, we would love to include you. As we go today, uh, let us go into the presence of God. That We may be going uh, just into the other room. We, we may be going just down the hall. But as we look around our home, may we see Jesus in our midst. And may the peace of Christ keep you. May the word of Christ have run of your house. May you give it plenty of room in your lives. May you instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And may you sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail of your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of Jesus. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. And we pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.